everyone for joining us this morning and this afternoon, wherever you're logging in from. I want to introduce Tom Alba to get us started on this webinar today. Thank you, Christine. So welcome, everyone. I wanted to uh, just take a moment and welcome everybody from around um, the world and, uh, and looking at the, the registrant um, participation. I see a lot of familiar names with customers that we do business with and some that we don't do business with. Um, so I really want to appreciate um, taking the time from wherever you are. I know it's late in the day for some people and early in the day for others, but just thank you for that. Um, I'll make mention before we get started, uh, there'll be time dedicated at the end for Q&A questions at the end of the webinar. So please submit any questions that you have uh, via the Q&A box. Um, and not via the chat box. So um, ju just to sort of get started, you know, my name is Tom Alvin. I'm the Vice President of Sales for MAPP, and I'll do my best to moderate, you know, today's session for you. Uh, just a, you know, quick moment about my background. So um, came up through the industry and worked for the Pittman Company for many years. And um, after that, went to AGFA who purchased Pittman in, uh, geez, I guess, 2010, um, and then came over to MAP at the beginning of 2018. So it's really been uh, a fantastic uh, uh, light for me. Uh, to start with, I mean, I'll, I'll just go over real quick, what is MAP, right? MAP, I mean, certainly everybody recognizes Mark Andy as a trusted and you know, long, long-standing, well-established narrow web press manufacturer. Um, and MAP is an acronym. It's an acronym for Mark Andy Print Products. Um, and it's uh, you know, essentially the, the flexo consumable segment of Mark Andy's business. Um, this is also, uh, you know, uh, as, as a MAP version, it was introduced in 2013 when they bought a company called um, Mark Andy Print Products or Print Products and it became Mark Andy. They also own uh, a separate segment of MAP that's uh, designed around Flexo. So if you have Flexo operations, we do have an operation as well that can um, uh, take care of your needs relative to flexography as well. So uh, being aligned with that, I, I wanna go into, I'll talk briefly about um, some of the, the other things that uh, are important to you, right? So if you talk about the agenda, you know, for the agenda for today's uh, webinar, it's going to be a webinar kickoff uh, where we go through uh, supplier opening remarks. I'm going to make some comments about the webinar in general, and then the suppliers will all have an opportunity to share information about what's new to them, um, information that um, could be helpful to you, um, and then a roundtable discussion where we've got some questions uh, that I put together along with other people to talk about um, the, you know, the uh, uh, the webinar um, uh, for for the group, and then the webinar, you know, attendees will get an opportunity to answer, ask questions, which we'll uh, we'll be able to go through as well. All right. So, state of the industry. Um, you know, thanks for attending. You'll get a quick rundown from all three about you know a high level sort of you know overview of some new products and new things that um, you, you know may be important to you where you understand what they're working on technically and with regards to some you know minor changes that are happening within your facilities and then evolving technology and processes to address those. So we hope the session is going to be informative to you um, as well. Right. So this slide, you know, state of the industry, I think these are you know, these are notes that um, almost every company within, you know, within the group has had to deal with. 2020 was really an unprecedented year from both a personal and a business standpoint. We've all seen that, you know, the fundamental and, you know, common everyday business challenges to your business in your household, you know, how do companies operate quickly when forced to adapt with health and safety concerns, establishing uh, new protocols for everyone to stay safe. Uh, we've all certainly seen and been affected by the global supply chain interruptions and the resulting challenges. And then two, like how does, in spite of the pandemic challenges, ensuring 
uncertainty about how long it's going to continue. We continue to see pushes towards sustainability, and we continue to see new technologies being developed and implemented across you know, customer efficiency and productivity. We'll touch on some of these as we go through it. And then lastly, you know, finally, how do we you know, identify these new challenges in our future state? How do companies pivot from sort of status quo and receive and embrace new information to help process um, and you know, ensure productivity? You know, even if we're operating in a, a you know, sort of a, a full virtual environment for a bit longer, it's incumbent upon you and your suppliers to bring you information and know-how to continue to further your business practices and productivity goals. So I want to make mention of just a few things offered that Mark Andy had uh, prior to the launch of this year. So what's new to Mark Andy? You know, just a quick overview of some new products. Uh, these are not, uh, you know, brand new, but um, when you take a look at the leading press manufacturers and we recognize the need to develop and offer products and complement our digital efforts and give customers further capabilities to single source, just a few of them come to mind. So Mark Andy, you know, print products as a manufacturer of, uh, you know, state-of-the-art, you know, printing equipment for narrow web and digital and others. We recognize that we were selling Dr. Blades and uh, would be good to have a Dr. Blade that's owned by our company, that's, you know, uh, taken a look at, at a, you know, really at a, a production level with the press that are going out the door and offer a product line um, around that. Uh, Mark Andy Performance Chiller Blades. I mean, it's, you know, something that everybody uses and something that I think as a company, we want to have our own, uh, our own performance blade. And then the Roll, Roll Lift MA2000 is something that, you know, when you take a look at how people operate in a press room environment, um, this is a really good product to help people, um, you know, do so productive, productive, productively. Uh, and also, you know, not have any issues relative to, um, you know, weight and, you know, things that you realize in that area. So these are just a few of the releases from Mark Andy Technical. Um, and if you wanted more information on them, certainly your representative, your, uh, the individual that calls on your facility can share this information with you without a problem. And then lastly, I'd be you know, remiss not to mention the newest edition of Mark Andy's digital press line, um, the digital IQ series. Uh, the, the industry was, you know, was in need, it's been in need for some time for a mid-market hybrid solution um, and a press that answers the call. It marries you know, Mark Andy's Flexo and Domino's digital module for fully integrated solution. And you can see how its merits right here um, that can complement a customer as well. Um, it, it'll, you know, it'll leave you with, you know, such an information about the press. Um, you know, it's certainly not my forte, uh, but it's part, I'm happy to be part of a company and a team that leads innovation around this in the label and packaging space um, and also the consumable areas of the company. Right. And then lastly, I want to share with you, um, you know, a, a, a graphic or, a, you know, a slide or a depiction of shows you, you know, what are we involved in? So when you bring Mark Andy consumable people into your account, um, what what are we involved in? So if you, you know, if you look at, you know, how it works and the pre-press area with digital um, ESCO clearly has the front end systems, they got the back end systems. They've got really everything that you need to, you know, produce a plate, um, do it effectively. And then we've got DuPont with, you know, not only the thermal, but also the, um, the solvent solutions as well. And then when you come down to, you know, tape as well, you've got Tessa down there. And, you know, Tessa is, you know, a fantastic manufacturer, um, really great technology. And then we have our own, you know, plate mounting systems. And when you get into the balance of it, they're really products, I think, that help a customer across the board. There are certainly more um, additional products that are available. Uh, but if you need those products, you know, certainly you can, 
um, you know, reach out to your Mark Andy representative and they'll supply those to you. So we're pleased to be joined by some of the leading um, industry suppliers today, Tessa, DuPont, um, ESCO, and we hope that with a quick rundown from each of them around their products, each participant will leave here with a little bit more knowledge that they came into it with. So that being said, um, it's my privilege to introduce to you our first manufacturer, Tessa, and ask Joel Gerhard and Alex Goyet to share some of their information with the audience. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. All good. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, and first and foremost, thank you, Mark Andy, for um, allowing us to be here as one of your partners and vendors for this webinar. So from Tessa's standpoint, um, like most, I'll, I'll go through kind of what we experienced the past year, but more importantly, how we've adapted. And then um, before I hand it off to Alex, who's our application solution engineer, I'll go through a couple of products. I'll highlight a couple of products that um, have been very promising for us uh, this past year. So 2020, um, I think a lot of, or I would say most, or if not everybody is extremely happy that the, the year is behind us. Um, however, you know, a lot of learning curves and a lot still to get through, right? So um, just from our perspective, uh, you know, we've ramped up our efforts internally um, and externally to make sure that we keep up with the market and keep up with, um, you know, those factors that we have to adapt to. So uh, anything from raw material shortage to increase in freight, which I believe everybody globally is experiencing, um, down to inflation that's, you know, simply on the horizon. Um, we've seen it this past year and we, we definitely see it moving forward. So what are we doing to adapt to that? Uh, you know, we, we talk about our firewall, how to protect our business and how to grow it. And behind that, I'll highlight some of the new technology um, that we, we consistently invest in with our R&D. Uh, we have a strategic approach that we go to, uh, go to with market. You'll see there in one of my bullet points. Um, part of our strategy has been our key account strategy. So attacking those corporate accounts in partnership with um, guys like Mark Andy, making sure that we um, not only stay consistent as a strong team, but we grow as a strong team. We, we keep ourselves educated and, um, you know, we spearhead the efforts with, with our products. And again, just the close collaboration, as you can see here um, with the vendors that you have here on the webinar and, and having that collaboration with our partners, we really believe that's a strong pillar to building that firewall. Uh, so a little bit about our key account team. Um, we've had a key account team now for a few years and we're, we're definitely strengthening that. Um, as an example, I had, um, I managed the US and Canada team for the last 15 months and was asked to come back to the key account team to lead those efforts. Um, you know, with both converters and CPGs, our marketing team is, is putting a lot of resources into that. So we see, we see where the market is shifting. We see how um, mergers and acquisitions are impacting the market and, and we're trying to stay on top of that. And then, uh, you know, I, I goes without saying that Mark Andy um, definitely has been a very, very strong partner for us. I just want to highlight that here very quickly. You know, we had we all had hurdles last year, and despite all that, they were still our number one partner. Um, and this year, moving forward, we've been able to work with Dave Telkin from Mark Andy and his team um, with one of our uh, unique products, Twinlock, and even implementing that in their demo room for presses. So. Um, definitely a strong, strong collaboration that we have here. And, and again, Tom, just very grateful for that. All right, so moving on. Uh, so what's new? Um, you'll see here, maybe a lot of you are familiar with, with our um, plate mounting tape lineup in our portfolio. Uh, we've got our classic series and our flex. I won't go into too much in terms of the difference, but highlighting um, one of the, the new additions this past year. So you'll see here, uh, this is, this is a structured liner, and we refer to it as our EA or easy application. And, and what does that mean? And why, why did we come up with that? So it offers a structured liner to give um, the applicators that ease of applying and eliminating or avoiding bubbles. So in the past, may have um, gotten some feedback on, hey, you know, what can we do with the liner? What can we do with the tape to 
to um, ease the effort that we have to put in in order to eliminate bubbles. So our R&D took that feedback and went back and came up with this product. And um, it's it's been a hit so far. So you'll see here we have it in our 20 mil line, but I'll, I'll say this much that the success that we've had so far, um, you know, in speaking with our management is, is definitely building a good business case for our 15 mil. And, and um, there's there, there's no official launch, but I will say that I think that our success will lead to that. And I'm hopeful that it will, because I believe it, it could be very successful in both the 20 and 15 mil market. Uh, so I talk a lot about our, our strategy and um, how we become the leader in the market. And, and that's that's just part, you know, that's part of it, investing in our R&D. So as we transition into here with the, the uh, Tessa Black X, so a little bit about high slip film splicing. This is our new Black X product. Um, it's 51948. That's the, the, the product number. But essentially what what we were attacking here are uh, some feedback we had with missed splices and not being able to run speeds at up to 3000 feet per minute. So long story short, this has allowed that. Um, we've seen speeds up to two to 3000. And it's not so much about reaching those speeds, but allowing the, um, the converters to realize the maximum speed of your press. So whether it's 500 or up to 3000. Uh, so we've been able to, to, to achieve that with this, and it's been extremely successful in anywhere from the narrow to wide web market for us. Uh, so with that, um, I'll hand it off to Alex. She'll go through some of our um, technology advances that we've had in this past year and how we've been able to capitalize during that in, in the COVID times. Thanks, Joel. Um, with all of these new product launches, we've had to develop some ways to get those out to market. Get training when we couldn't travel. Um, so we started that with our precision plate mounting program. This is a certification program we developed to help our customers audit and optimize their mounting procedure. Um, and it's really focused on two tracks. The first focuses on our products and the SOP steps to be sure to uh, you know, make sure that the training is consistent across all mounters and all steps. And then the second builds on that and adds information about the principles of adhesives and how they relate to plate mounting. We've also introduced the use of augmented reality goggles in order to train our customers without travel. Um, we implemented these to conduct live training that actually allow customers to ask questions, ask for clarification. We can change the viewing angle because as you can see, it's a camera, right? So um, we can. We can change on the fly as needed. What I also love about these is that they integrate directly into Teams. So setting up a session for these goggles is as easy as attending a conference call for both ourselves and our customers. And I'm really excited to see what we do with them next. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the you know the AR goggles. I, I know Alex. I mean, we at Mark Andy, at least on the the press service side, have you know also. Um, looked into that and starting to use it. So it's been, you know, really good technology and um, something I think that, you know, you, you want to look at to help service your customers. So thank you. We appreciate it. Um, next, we'll hear from Jim Kohanek from, uh, from DuPont's IRL Systems, talk a little bit more about his background and, you know, what are some of the things that DuPont's doing as well. Um, and, you know, so without any further mention, Jim, I'm going to throw it over to you. Thanks, Tom. My name is Jim Kohanek, and I'm one of DuPont's senior technical service consultants. I've been in the printing packaging industry for 40 years and been with DuPont for the past 19. During this time, I've had the privilege of visiting over 400 customers, helping them eliminate waste and improve overall operating efficiencies. Most of my time is spent in the press room, where I have a pretty good understanding of third-party printing variables. I'm Six Sigma certified, a graduate of the University of Wisconsin Stout, and enjoy playing golf and traveling in my spare time. When I look at some of the challenges we face today in the field, three things come to my mind. The first without a doubt is training. I've never seen in all my years so many new people in today's workplace. This accompanied by travel restrictions has made training a unique challenge. My guess, due to internal policies, 
you too were probably not also able to call in a Mark Andy, Esco, Tessa, or a DuPont representative to help you with things that may have gotten missed along the way. My suggestion to everyone on this call is to take a step back and go back to the basics. Refamiliarize yourself with what made you successful and start fresh. Like Alex just discussed earlier, earlier, the picture in the upper left-hand corner is that new form of virtual training from Microsoft Teams. Here an operator can wear a headset with a camera and carry on a real-time conversation with someone on the other end who can help them troubleshoot a problem. The second is changing processes. Please don't assume things were as they were prior to COVID. I learned really quick once I hit the road again, solutions and answers weren't simple. You really needed to step back and revisit the entire manufacturing process to see where things may have drifted over the past year. Audit your process. If you feel something may have changed either with your plates, your cushion, your ink or another key manufacturing variable, consider rebenching your process. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I visited a customer who was concerned their plates were not lasting as long. And they asked me what changed with our process. After a discussion and a lengthy audit, I soon realized the customer had changed their cleaning solvent to a more economical blend without doing a compatibility test with the plate. Bottom line was the cleaning agent swelled, softened and left this oily deposit on the plate leading to pouring transfer and premature plate wear. The third challenge was, I'm gonna use the word more of an opportunity. For the first time in about five years, the customers asking for DuPont's participation in joint continuous improvement projects. I'm currently active in three of these projects at my customers, dealing with unscheduled press downtime, plate longevity, and dirty printing. To get started, all you need to do is identify those pain points within your organization. Look at what resources you have available and develop a path forward. On behalf of Chan Hansen, I would like to thank you for your time today. We look forward to your questions. And with that, Tom, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Jim. It's really good. Um, so, so next, I'll, uh, I'll go into um, ESCO and introduce um, Julian Fernandez of ESCO. Looking forward to hearing from Julian and some of the quick rundowns that he has on what's new from ESCO. So Julian. Thanks. Hey, Tom, can, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you for having me here today. My name is Julian Fernandez. I've been with ESCO for the last 10 years. I work as a business developer manager for Flexo and Color for North America out of Canada. Okay, uh, next. ESCO's innovations are all around the next generation of the playmaking room. As you know, to make a Flexo plate, there are multiple steps and each of them requires to have a person or what we call a touch point. That human in interventions usually interrupts the workflow since the person has to be available at the moment to do it. And also generates a potential quality or waste issue. So ESCO's vision is to eliminate as much as possible the steps with software and hardware based on three simple concepts. First, simplicity, consistency, and automation, keeping the highest quality available in the market. So I would like to show you the latest member of our Crystal family, the XPS and Crystal CDI size 4260 that completes the family with the 4835 and 5080 already available. But this is not everything. To the existing plate handler that blows a plate in the CDI and after imaging, it will uh, uh, transfer the plates from the CDI to the XPS. We are adding now a loading station called the plate feeder. That allows it uh, to keep a plate ready to be loaded. And this will give fully automation and productivity to the CDI since it doesn't need an operator anymore waiting for the CDI to finish or the CDI waiting for the operator to come and bring the plate. This way the CDI is fully automated and optimized. We are also introducing a certification program for XPS users. We already have the first two trade shops certified in North America and more coming. Here is Linkage in the US and one in Canada. The next one is in parallel. And um, this program basically guarantees that the plate produced 
is within the default polymers manufacturer standards. I also mentioned that the concept is to keep the highest quality. But what that means, usually when we think about quality, we are thinking about visual appearance. But quality is more, much more than that. This also relates to waste. And when we analyze waste, every book written about quality refers to the same. The cost of fixing a problem is higher the later you are in the production chain, right? So next, what this means for a printer is that it is much cheaper to fix a problem in the pre-press than actually it is at the press. But it's important to realize that pre-press is not only about the digital preparation of the file, it's also about making the plate itself. And so far, playmakers focus on increasing the quality of the imaging and increasing the quality of the files, but we always took the exposure for granted. But it won't matter all the money you spend in software and imaging if you cannot transfer that quality on the plate in a consistent way. Meaning if your exposure system doesn't hold what you image on the black mask, then you know the quality of your press cannot be better than the quality of your plate. So this is the innovation that the XPS LED exposure system is bringing to the table. And thank you, I'll pass it back to you, Tom. Thanks, Julian. That's really good, a good update on ESCO. And then last but not least, we'll, uh, we'll introduce Cheryl Cole from Mark Andy Print Products. Um, I know that you know we've given you a quick rundown on some of the things that we're involved in, but Cheryl, um, takes a minute to introduce herself and share some of her background and um, printing knowledge. Thanks uh, for attending. I really appreciate you inviting me to take part in this. Um, I've been in this industry since 1974, uh, started in a printer, uh, in that into a trade shop, and then have worked um, in the uh, supply side of the chain for the last uh, 30 plus years. When we look at our road map for the future, we really need to consider um, setting our goals, you know, just what do we need, you know, um, if we plan and follow the plan, then we're successful. If we just try to jump into it, it just doesn't work. So are we expecting to get new customers with new requirements, launch new products? Um, do we need to replace old technology, uh, you know, equipment that is outdated? Uh, you know, just what path do we need to go to to uh, reach our goal? And when we do this, probably the best way and I want to say second what, what Jim was saying is we really need to conduct audits and review what's working well. You know, what are our daily challenges? Mm -hmm. uh, review the standards as they're set up now. Uh, do we just run to the print by numbers as they were set up? Or do we investigate new technologies such as plates, equipment, material, <clears throat> as far as mounting tapes and doctor blades? And again, being in the field, as, as Jim had mentioned, uh, I've never seen so many people retire and so many new employees. And we really need to address the training, need it be one-on-one, -on -one, you know, new technology, uh, videos have customers set up, uh, training that can be ongoing with the ever revolving door of, of new employees. Once we get everything established, we have to reinforce these practices and controls and make sure that we, we keep this as best practices and back to basics and be able to run um, pre-press, plate making, plate mounting, and on press repeatable and get the jobs out on time. Tom, I'll throw it back to you. Good, thank you, Cheryl. Really, um... Really interesting and uh, appreciate it. So we'll jump into um, just sort of disrupting the sort of the status quo. And this is one that, you know, Jim, it's, it's interesting to get involved in this and, you know, innovations and sort of, you know, uh, debuts of products and processes and things that, you know, continue to improve. 
Um, Jim, you had, you had mentioned earlier, like changing processes just a little while ago. Um, I think that might be a perfect fit here. Can you expand a little bit on that for us? Yes, Tom, I can. And I, I first want to thank you for the question. In this case, there are things that have changed within our organization with or without our knowledge. Um, I just shared with you a story about one of my customers substituting a more economical cleaning agent leading to poor ink transfer and um, premature plate wear. I had another customer complaining about high dot gain after only one roll of film. And I later found out in the last six months that they had begun short drying their plates by up to an hour. Yes, the, 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 the solids measured fine, but the highlight dots were all over pitch and would put under impression the tips of the dots were literally shared off. Um, mm -hmm. I had a third customer uh, getting plates from the outside and they never verified the bump curb. Once those plates hit press, the minimum and the scum dots that did not form up in plate making were easily broken off leading to dirty printing. So thank you. You bet, yeah, I completely agree. Um, so status quo and, you know, I guess contentment um, or really a barrier to achieving, you know, optimal results and even, you know, minor changes can bring. Um, so, so Alex, I, I think that, you know, it certainly applies to some of the choices, you know, when suppliers and manufacturers can adjust to positively affect print quality. What, what can you, what can you add here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we often see customers using the same tape hardnesses that they've used for years because they've just never retested, despite often making huge changes in the plates, the inks, the analogs that they're using. Um, certainly the principles of tape are the same, softer tape for dots, harder tape for solids. Uh, but we found that by going back and retesting, you can actually fine tune your printing quite a bit um, in maybe a way that's unexpected to you. So to just, uh, you know, yeah, good. Repeat what Jim said. Trialing is important to make sure that you're optimized. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, so we move to the next one. Um, customer common questions. So um, Cheryl, I think I'll throw it over to you. I think as somebody who works with all these solutions and customers day in and day out, you, you probably have a unique viewpoint here. Um, can you share you know, one or two of the questions that you commonly get from converters about things that they're looking to change. Well, thanks, Tom. Yeah, you know, probably the most asked question these days is, you know, do I, how do I replace my offset and my my digital with Flexo? Um, you know, the runs within this last year have gotten so much longer with you know, COVID, they're, they're just not changing into all these variable SKUs and things that a lot of this has been run digital. You, you just can't run this kind of qualities with Flexo um, or with digital, you need to move it to Flexo. So that's being said, you know, it is the perfect um, opportunity to take advantage of, you know, what ESCO now has to offer with crystal screening, um, XPS exposure, you know, we, we're looking at something that we need to have repeatable results going forward. That being said, we also have um, the change, just like Alex just mentioned, you know, with plate material, you know, when you embrace a new technology, we also need to embrace the plate, the tapes, the blades, the analogs. We need to, um, consider the entire system. And what I've found um, to be best to say we will move uh, to a DuPont easy plate so we can extend our tonal range. We don't have as much sharpening with it. We therefore change the durometer of the plate, therefore need to change the durometer of the tape and get less dot gain and really be able to take the advantage of what the crystal screening has to offer. It, um, you know, is, is something that if we do our homework up front prior to installing this equipment, then the install just goes seamlessly. Yeah, excellent. Good, good. So maybe Julian, thinking about you, I mean, what are, you know, what are the things that, you know, people ask ESCO about to learn from ESCO? 
Yeah, this is a very good question, Tom. Um, and Sherry already mentioned some of the of the things that uh, customers are more interested uh, today. Um, what I would like to add is that in today's environment, in particular, with a lot of small orders combined, with an increasing volume uh, of them in some segments, those uh, the ones more related to COVID, um, workflow becomes a key element in the production process. Similar to what happens for a customer. Um, that is used to offset or flex only and adds a digital press. Now the workflow becomes the bottleneck because now they need to move from three jobs uh, a day to 20 or more small jobs a day, right? So the only way to manage this is with a very efficient and lean workflow, connecting the MIS system all the way down to production. And many companies are talking to us about this you know, our automation engine, our web center connects very well and provides a real solution. The other day, for example, talking to a customer uh, said, said to me um, something that I found very interesting. She said that in the future, successful companies will be the ones with better processes and workflow. That's mm -hmm. uh, referring, referring to um, uh, where they are focusing their investments, right? Yeah, yeah excellent, We're very good. Very good. So uh, if we move to the next one, so expanding on like sort of latest technologies. Um, so Jim, I mean, DuPont's always been recognized as a market leader with, you know, photopolymer plates, um, you know, with over, geez, I think well over a thousand fast installs throughout the world. Um, in my experience, the launch of, you know, DuPont's Easy Plate a couple of years ago in the plate uh, it has been overwhelmingly a game changer for customers. Can, can you share maybe some of the recent developments around plate, you know, enhancements or new plates? You know, new, I know Easy R is out there. Yep. Um, and mm -hmm. some additional benefits I think that customers could look to. I absolutely can, Tom. Uh, let's just for starters, I really love our Easy Flat Top plates. In my opinion, they maximize your solid ink density and they minimize press impression. Uh, for starters, uh, you are able to use a softer tape and thus you have overall lower dot gain. You also have the capability of optimizing your minimum dot, giving you fades down to zero. On the press side, I see higher press speeds. But what I also like is the longevity of the flat top dot. The EZR series you mentioned, Tom, offers improved dot robustness. On the plate making side, this helps hold those fine highlight dots in addition to an improved uh, latitude or, 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 or exposure parameters. On the press side, you should see longer lasting and also cleaner running plates. You should also notice improved ink lay down with the well-defined surface screening. And if you're into metrics like I am, you should also notice an improvement in your press up time. Thank you. Awesome, good. So Alex, um, you know, TESS has been implemented, you know, in hundreds of U.S. customers now. And, you know, what we, you know, recent developments say, I don't know, the last three to five years, would you say have led to this adoption and success? Um, you know, additionally, uh, you know, you mentioned that, you know, Tessa and Mark Andy are collaborating with Twinlock on, you know, uh, demo room presses. Can you add anything around that? Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, Tessa is always innovating to best serve our market. In the last five years, I think what we really saw was a need for adhesives that made it easier to reposition plates during mounting and demounting, um, and easier demounting of plates without, you know, damaging the tape at the end to really help with faster turnaround times, those short runs that we all are experience, experiencing. Um, you know, these adhesives that allow for the plate to be removed quickly and cleanly and easily are really helpful. To that end, we've re released two different adhesives. Um, they're both, you know, really targeted at that market. And Twinlock also plays into that. It's uh, a reusable sleeve, so you reduce the amount of time needed to reapply tape every time, right? It's a matter of removing the plate, cleaning the twin lock and then remounting your plate back on and you're back up and running. Yeah, awesome, good, thank you. And then maybe just one more here. Um, 
maybe for Julian, I've heard that, you know, an interesting fact that nine out of 10 products that are on the shelf, whether they're, you know, food, beverage, healthcare, whatever, ultimately produced with ESCO workflow. I mean, it's an amazing accomplishment. Um, what developments on the front end do you think, you know, customers should keep their eyes on? I mean, certainly, you know, automation engine, ECG, you know, uh, even the work you're doing with ABT inspection systems come to mind. What, what are some things people would keep their eyes on? Absolutely, Tom. ESCO is uh, very focused on automation. Uh, we are the company that connects everyone in the production process from the communication between the brand and the agency or designer to the pre-media company, trade shops, converters. We specialize in giving solutions to basically all of them from 3D design to virtual or physical mockups. We have solutions to design, super cool that you can design a virtual supermarket and then the augmented uh, reality where you can walk in and pick up a box and you know analyze the box in your hand like if it were real. Um, for a printer, use an automation engine and color management systems. We can connect, manage all the profiles. You know, we can make different printing processes to look alike. Um, those can be done with CNYK plus spot colors or even more efficient, as you mentioned, using expanded gamut. Um, we have a solution that is called Equinox. We can prepare files, adding the control strips from the file directly and color patches that then can be later used on the press uh, to inspect the quality and control them with an AVT system that can be connected. And that information can go back into color sort and x right which is part of the, you know, Danaher family, it's a sister company, where the color references can be stored and then that information can go back to the customer in a form of a report. So um, again, from the customer to all the way back to the customer, that information. Mm -hmm. And I do recommend every customer to keep an eye on this. This can be done in stages. You know, they, they, we start from optimizing the printing process. As I said before, bringing color management to bring them all together, um, different processes, different substrates, all the way to process control to, to reduce waste to the very minimum. Excellent, yeah, very good. Uh, so maybe move on to the next one. So just under sort of industry trends here, I know Cheryl, you've mentioned about customers, um, you know, use, looking to use more white ink. I mean, how can you share anything on that? Uh, yeah, white ink is is beginning to be the the hottest topic I think on in the printer right now. You know, we're looking at, for example. Um, or is the customer printing on poly bags or beverage labels? Um, we need to consider what type of ink they're running, you know, water-based, solvent, UV, and the analogs and the doctor blade. Uh, in the past, the specs for the white ink were all based on density. And what happens is people were pu putting as much ink down as they possibly could uh, with large supercells and just piling the ink up, but it still was not laying down smoothly. And when we look at the um, new technologies available uh, with, with plates and screening, one of the biggest um, proponents of this is the, the Tessa Green tape. Um, it helps us lay down a lot smoother um, finish with a lot less model and you really uh, get the opacity that you're looking for, not density. So we're starting to look at measuring this now mm -hmm. in opacity for that very reason. Um, and we need to look at the plate, you know, with the more porous stock, um, like a, a beverage, you know, a wine or, or uh, a local brewery type stock, you know, we, when we're laying white down, um, something like an ESM plate, like a medium durometer may be the best fit. Or if we're on um, film, uh, perhaps like an EFX will give us the best surface. Um, then we also have another way to attack this, and this is um, considering screening. You know, do we look at DuPont Easy Bright screening for this process? Do we use ESCO microcell or crystal screening? Um, you know, or do we use a plate with just a textured surface or do we not need any of them if we just change the plate and the tape? 
And really the way to put this to the test is put a test up on the press, a single color, you know, set impression, um, really an important thing to always stress when we go to do this is we're not doing a printing contest on press. We want everyday real, you know, scenarios here. And we, we need to stress that with the te press people. They're not on, you know, you're not on stage here. You're, you're not, you don't need to do the best you, you ever could do because then you got to do that every time you run. Yep. Um, and one of the last things I'll, I'll close with is the when we're running a large volume analogs um, to lay down this this ink, um, what we found is people were still using their step blades or their thin blades. And if we move over to a radius blade, um, then it's not like a, a long life like QRE uh, blade, then we're not going to wear as, as fast and have a much cleaner um, wiping. Yeah, good, good. All right, so um, maybe as we get to the end of the questions here, so Alex, maybe for the audience today, you know, any takeaways that you would have with converters and, you know, regard to, you know, implementing tests in the press room? Yeah, I mean, I, for us, you know, we want to be there every step of the way. Um, we've really committed our team, both in training our sales specialists, but also a role like myself, where I spend in a normal year, not a 2020 year, um, a lot of my time with converters, with our customers, walking you through these sort of audits and optimizations that Cheryl just talked about. Uh, and that's really like the purpose of the certification is to give a little bit of context to that as well, um, and really bring your operators in to the same training level across, you know, multiple shifts, multiple operators, um, and work with you to optimize your process as best as possible. Good, yeah, good information. All right, so maybe one last question. I mean, Cheryl, I know you've done, you know, pretty extensive work with um, with with Dupont and with Tessa on, you know, implementing, um, you know, tape products. I mean, let's face it, a you know, a photopolymer tape product is very expensive. It's, you know, arguably where the, you know, the, the rubber meets the road, right? And, you know, what are some of the, you know, the key things you think you found in, in implementing those and what can customers sort of just take a look at as they try to benefit from um, tape selection? One of the things I see now is, you know, with uh, using the easy plates for several years now is the, um, improved ink transfer we get with um, a, a flat top plate. And uh, what we've also found is that coupled with uh, the Tessa tape and, and the latest version uh, of the flex tape uh, also is true to this, but uh, all the tape that Tessa provides is cast. Um, so we don't have any open cell um, collapsing on the surface. Right. And what we're finding is that um, the customers can take a plate, uh, say an EFX plate with um, this Tessa Flex Red on it and come in and come up, it come into impression and not have to keep readjusting, uh, say for a three day run or a week run, you know, every shift. The, um, we're finding these cells aren't, um, I want to say deteriorating uh, in the foam, along with the impression of the less impression with the plate. Uh, it also helps eliminate bounce, chatter, um, all those kind of things that are, are put on, you know, even I want to say gear, motor gear, um, catch up on the back end. Uh, it helps us with keeping dirty print out and, um, a clean of print as, as possible. I think, um, Alex, you've seen a lot of this on press too, and you've been running, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've always taken pride in our quality foams, but the Flex product that we've introduced in the last couple of years that um, changes sort of the drape of our tape, we've seen really change some of those uh, print results, like you said, in terms of balance and some of the gear chatter and has been producing really good results. Yeah, good. 
But so that's it for you know the um, uh, just sort of the roundtable discussion here. We have a little bit of time left, and I think people have have sent in some questions. So um, maybe I'll just sort of open this up to the group and um, let you guys sort of answer. So one was I'm struggling uh, with having to come up to color and hit densities. Any suggestions? Absolutely. Um, if you aren't already cleaning your plate prior to inking, I strongly consider you doing that. If you think about the plate and what's in your printing environment, the air, uh, the, the, the handling of the plate, the greases and the oils from your hands and, and basically everything. Um, if you just take 100% alcohol and you go over the surface of that plate, your solids only, uh, you'd be real surprised uh, about how much more density you can get. Uh, another thing is uh, just make sure your ink is balanced. Um, what I mean by that is your is your densities. Your cyan and your magenta densities are are identical. Your yellow is low and your black is high. If one of those gets a little bit out of whack, uh, things aren't going to go well for you. And the other two things, and you're probably already doing those now, is please make sure you're using a new steel metering doctor blade, and you also have a clean analogs roller. Okay. Very good. Um, so what would, you know, what would be the benefits of using crystal screening and XPS LED technology in the press room? Maybe that's, you know, for uh, Julian, good question. Yeah, that, that's correct. They are, I mean, and I would, I would love to answer this question. Actually, I was uh, hoping someone asked something like this uh, because when we think about the XPS, many people think about, you know, a benefit only for the plate room. And there are many advantages of this technology for the playroom for sure, but they're not only there, right? Many of them will impact the press as well. And just to name some, number one is consistency. The quality and consistency of LED exposure is so high that actually allow us to um, create new screens. And, that, and those can um, be used um, because of the level of consistency that the XPS supplies. So those screens, we call them crystal screens, are especially designed to improve print quality. They transfer better solids, including the white ink, as uh, Sherry was talking before. They reduce bridging in transition areas. They print much cleaner, gradations without rings, and they fade to zero very nicely. In many cases, it was published last year in the uh, November edition of the Flexo magazine. If you find it, there's um, um, an article about four label printers that they implemented this technology and they're talking what what were their findings and the benefits. Um, in, in many cases, some of them, they were able to print offset images without flexorizing them, you know. Um, anyone in the audience willing to test what I'm saying, please send us an email or send me an email and I can, I can send you samples or I can even send you a plate, same plate you use. I can send the same plate type uh, with crystal screens for you to compare the quality. And I promise you, you will be shocked to see the difference just by changing the screen on the plate. Good. Okay. So we're, uh, I think we're sort of up against it here. We've got four minutes to go. Um, may, you know, Cheryl, you mentioned a little bit about press room audits and what it looks like to do that. Um, so, you know, what does a customer need to prepare if they wanted to do that? What do they need to do? They need to, to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, Jim and I've done a lot of these uh, over the years. And um, what we find is, you know, it's good to have a group meeting, but it's also good to visit all three shifts, uh, visit the press room, visit the pre-press, uh, visit mounting, uh, uh, police plate making, and more importantly, you know, the folks that create the files up front really need to understand the entire process. And uh, as we installed some crystal screening uh, XPS units um, earlier in the year, uh, when we involved the pre-press, and had them understand the implement, implementations of what happens um, when they, they don't run a particular curve or um, you know, overshoot a target or you know, I wanna say, what, 
as long as they don't follow the path of which we've taken and proven, then that causes a rolling ball going the whole way through the system. Yeah. And we, we need to understand that in plate making. Um, we also under, need to understand, and when we do an audit, we, we, we find out where uh, folks aren't looking. Um, they're looking, but they're not seeing. Uh, for instance, we had a customer that um, was checking every plate, a 1%, a 3%, a 20%. And they were just checking it on a Betaflex and, okay, it passed. But nobody actually looked at that dot to right. find out that they were grossly overexposing. Another, another customer, you know, just totally forgot about um, their, their back to basics training and wasn't doing any of the bulb warming. Uh, so every plate that was done had a different back exposure because of the difference of, of the temperature. So um, in order to do an audit, we really just need everybody to buy in, um, understand that we're not there as a gotcha. We're not trying to put anybody against the wall. We're trying to find your pain points so that we make your life easier on you every day. And if we then gather all that information, set down and come up with the, the best path forward, then, then we have a plan. Um, you know, yeah. do we use a, a DuPont plate with the screening um, on it? Do we use special you know, screening um, from DuPont or ESCO to improve transfer? Do we use a different tape? You know, our, our analogs is not clean. Um, there again, Jim and I uh, went into an account where we looked at the analogs and we don't know how any ink was coming out of the cells, you know, and they were changing tape on a daily basis. So, you right. know, that would be a red flag right away uh, for managers and owners, if, if you see this kind of activity going on, let's talk. You know, we can do an audit over the phone. We can do it side by side. You can conduct it, but you really need to, to step back and, and take a look at what we're doing on a daily basis and what's the best way to make this run smoothly. Good, good. Well, that's it. I think uh, Christine is going to uh, there's a, a slide up at the very end. Everybody can, you know, have the information from the folks that were on the call. Um, I want to thank everybody for being on the call. It was, you know, for me, it was interesting and I'm sure for the customers it was. So uh, those that have submitted questions, if we weren't able to get to them, we'll make sure that we do and we get you some uh, information back in writing. So uh, beyond that, thank you for participating in the call. Thank you for the manufacturers for being part of it. And um, we wish you all the best for a good day today. Mm -hmm.